Welcome back to First News Forum. I'm Daniel Armbruster. Our special guest today, Senator J. Paul Gum of Durant. We're talking about topics in the news lately in southern Oklahoma and the state of Oklahoma that uh, that you faced and the rest of the Senate and uh, House of Representatives have faced up in the Capitol. Uh, Sardis Lake, <clears throat> a lot of controversy there. Huge controversy. Over water rights. Oh. Hey, for folks who don't know, explain what exactly is going on there. Well, the bottom line is about 30 years ago, the federal government built Sardis Lake, and the state of Oklahoma owes a debt, I think it's about $28 million for the construction of Sardis. Uh, the state's never made good on that debt, mm -hmm. and a few years ago, the federal government took Oklahoma to court, got a court ruling, and the first of the payments on Sardis Lake is due uh, July 1st. So $5.2 million has to go from the state of Oklahoma to the federal government or the state stands uh, a chance of being held in contempt of court. Uh, well, we didn't pass money in the legislative session to pay that bill. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a number of people saw this as an opportunity to create a crisis and s set up a situation whereby Oklahoma City could buy the water storage rights for Sardis Lake uh, for in order to pay off that debt in essence transferring Sardis Lake as a resource for the entire state of Oklahoma and putting it in the hands of one city and that being Oklahoma City what do you see wrong with that oh uh, there's a lot of things wrong with it first of all this is a manufactured crisis it didn't have to happen uh, a lot of us have been advocating for years that we pay this debt uh, for, compared to the remainder of state governments a relatively small amount of money uh, second thing, we didn't have to go hat in hand to Oklahoma City to pay this debt. Uh, the Choctaw and Chickasaw Nations had both agreed to step up and pay the $5.2 million payment this year. And that's critical because we're about a year away from the statewide comprehensive water plan from being completed, which is a study you look at both your resources and your needs over the next 50 or 60 years and plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason, we don't want to wait till that plan is done before we start a huge water transfer from one part of the state to another. Second problem with that is that it is stripping from one part of Oklahoma an incredible resource that could be used to drive economic development and economic growth and transferring it to another part of Oklahoma without an appropriate return of resource back to the basin of origin. Mm -hmm. In essence, they're taking it from us and we're getting nothing in return for right. it. We're getting no money for economic development, no money to, to build our infrastructure, no money to lay the foundation for future growth in southeastern Oklahoma. Correct me if I'm wrong, the, the area, I w you wouldn't call it economically rich by any means compared to what's in Oklahoma City. Well, it, you look at resources as total, far as as far what they have now and what they could have where it doesn't have capital mm -hmm. in the form of cash it does have amazing natural resources right so what you try to do is convert natural resources into capital right. and then use that to attract and build jobs and build future uh, this bill precludes that oppor opportunity to be there mm -hmm. uh, because it takes the resource Southeastern Oklahoma gets nothing in return mm -hmm. uh, and here's the funny thing I was up at the water resources board when they voted five to two to transfer the water storage rights from the state of Oklahoma to Oklahoma City. And we're not talking about a transfer of water at this point yet. Right. Just the bowl, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, the city manager of Oklahoma City was the only person in the entire room uh, who spoke in favor of this transfer from Sardis Lake to Oklahoma, from the state of Oklahoma to Oklahoma City. And he began his presentation by talking about what a terrible deal this is for Oklahoma City. If someone who is fighting so hard to get the deal complains about how bad the deal is, yeah. you have to be suspicious about the motives. Uh, and the motives are quite simply this. It's taking another resource from rural Oklahoma, transferring it to metro Oklahoma, and it is in essence treating our part of the state as a third world country. And that's just not acceptable to a good many of us. And why do you think that Chickasaw and uh, the Choctaw money, why do you think that's not being looked at? Because it fixed the problem. Yeah. And this was a problem that was created. I, I said very clearly at that meeting, we are not here by accident. We are here by design. And you have people who have a vested interest in seeing this resource transferred to Oklahoma City, and a good number of them are going to term limit out mm -hmm. this year. So that's why there was such a critical effort to get it done now, because these people and legislative leadership and, frankly, the governor and the treasurer are going to be out of office come January, so they had to get it done now. The truth is, what happened with the Water Resources Board a couple of weeks ago simply is not the end of the fight. 
Mm -hmm. Oklahoma City may like for it to be the end of the fight. Those who negotiated this deal from the part of the state may like for it to be the end of the fight, but it really is just another step. You've got tribal water rights that have to be honored and, and litigated, and you have whether this is simply a right or wrong issue that will ultimately be litigated. There are citizens groups, tribal groups uh, that are going to stand up and assert their rights, and I'm, I'm certain this will end up in a court of law. This could take years to, to work out. Absolutely could take years to work out. So if those who had been plotting and planning and, and created this design to get it done now, <laughs> I think at the end of the day they're going to be very disappointed because this is not a fight we're willing to let go. Uh, this is about our future, and this is about having the resources to build our future in an appropriate way. Uh, we deserve that. Mm -hmm. uh, we may not have capital, but we have natural resources, and we should have the opportunity to be able to turn those resources into capital for our long-term economic future. Marshall County, one of the poorest counties in the state of Oklahoma. Not for long. Not for long. A company has promised at least half a billion dollars, if not more, uh, in investments there uh, to build private infrastructure and property there. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy, although it seems to have died down somewhat uh, over the development of Point Vista and what they plan to do there at Lake Texoma State Park. What, what's the latest on that and where is it going now? The well, latest on that, the lodge has been demolished uh, mm -hmm. and, and the demolition is continuing uh, in the old state park area to get it ready to put in the infrastructure. And that was probably one of the greatest challenges that we had to look at when we tried to figure out what we were going to do with the old Lake Texoma State Lodge. I mean, it had literally deteriorated over a course of years. She was a grand old lady who was mm -hmm. no longer grand. They were unable to, uh, the uh, Friends of Lake Texoma State Park, unable to get the, the signatures needed for a petition. I, do you think that that was the nail in the coffin for their, what they wanted to do? Or? I, I think that sent a message that most of Marshall County is supportive of this. Now, nothing is unanimous, and there, mm -hmm. there are still some people who are opposed, and right. they're very vocal, and they have the right to be opposed. But at the end of the day, what we have to look at is where we were. We were at a lodge that was deteriorating to the point where chances are it wouldn't be open today anyway, regardless of whether there had been a bill passed to privatize it. The second thing we have to realize is this is the single largest economic development project in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, it's as big as the new Devon Tower, which will be the tallest building in Oklahoma that's being built in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. It is an amazing investment. And during the course of uh, this process of, of privatizing that land, I had the chance to spend some time with Governor George Nye, who, when he was lieutenant governor, essentially created the state lodge system. And I said, why did we make the decision to go with state-owned lodges rather than private investment? He said, simple. We didn't have anybody that wanted to invest. In and our, now you do. And now we do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we hear a lot of talk about people concerned about our country moving toward socialism, that sort of thing. Well, in a socialist country, the government owns things like hotels and resorts, mm -hmm. not in America. And, and we've seen, we, we had that model. The lodge worked great for a number of years, but then it began to deteriorate. State government doesn't reinvest like private enterprise will. Mm -hmm. This will create thousands of new jobs, hundreds right there on the new resort, and create opportunities for even more jobs for an increased tourist base that will be coming to Lake Texoma to what will be one of the premier resorts in middle America. If you look at the Texas side versus the Oklahoma side, there is a difference in development there. Is it, is it something that you want to do compared to the Texas side, or do you want to go bigger than that? Bigger than that. <laughs> bigger than that. Our, our, Got to be bigger our, than Texas. Right? Absolutely. Our, our, <laughs> our hopes is that we create the kind of resort that Texoma has always deserved. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the State Lodge model worked 50 years ago when it was built. That model does not work now. It's the, the model is private enterprise. The model is private investment. And the fact that we have the ability to attract the single largest economic development project in the state says volumes about the potential at Lake Texoma. And, you know, a lot of people talk about Durant being Boomtown USA mm -hmm. and all the private investment that's happened there over the past 10 years. In one fell swoop, Point Vista will be a larger economic development project than all of Durant private investment over the last 10 years. Wow, it's that's a, pretty it's big. An, it's an amazing project that's going to be remake the Marshall County and Southern Oklahoma economy for the next 50 years. And it really, if you looked at things where we were seven years ago when we began looking at what to do, mm -hmm. this really was the only option we had. Okay, well, coming up next, we're going to talk about the grocery tax, the grocery sales tax, and also veterans. Stay with us. We'll be right back.